Good afternoon all. Should we take a look at Parkside's double battery charger for the 12 volt team series batteries? This is the 2 amp hour one. Let's get it out of the box. So here it is, two slots and I've noticed in the slots as well as the two uh, springy terminals there's also a pogo pin which you can push down. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Okay, so on the front we've got uh, the charging lights which are red and the charged lights which are green. Let's take a look at the underside. So this says uh, double charger for uh, 12 volt Parkside team batteries. Output 12 volt 4.5 amps. Output 2 12 volt 4.5 amps. Up to 4.5 amps because in the manual, now this is the charger here at the bottom, the PDSLG 12A1, we've got 2.4 amps, 60 minutes to charge the two amp hour pack, A1 type, uh, 45 minutes, 3.5 amps to charge the A2 type, mm. and 60 minutes, 4.5 amps to charge the four amp hour or the 12B1 pack. Okay, so let's take a look at all those. So I didn't realize that in this 2 amp hour model there are actually two different versions. There's the A1 and there's the A2. What's the difference? Well from the outside the main difference you notice is there's a little button there whereas the A1 doesn't have a button and this is marked ID. So that's what the little pogo pin is in here it can sense whether you've got an A1 or an A2 battery. And I presume it can also sense the difference between the 2 amp hour A2 battery with button and the 4 amp hour uh, B1 battery, which also has a button. Now we saw when I did a teardown of this, and I'll put a link to that video in the description below, that there's actually a resistor running between that button and this T tab and I may have a look at that again because I'm assuming in order to get the different currents there's a different resistor in the 4 amp hour pack to the resistor in the 2 amp hour pack. We'll take a look at that. So let's have a little play with this. Now how best to measure current? I'm not going to try and intercept the current on the battery side. I'm going to measure it with this on the main side so it won't be the actual current going into the battery but it'll be an approximation and we can see what happens using the different batteries. So I've plugged it in, no batteries in it, but it is drawing a bit of power, 1.3 watts. Well, there are a couple of LEDs on, so that doesn't explain the full 1.3 watts, but yeah, it's consuming something. Okay, let's try the battery that doesn't have the little button on it. And it's that way around and see what that draws. Oh, now I've got the problem that I think all my batteries are full. Hmm, bit of a lack of planning there because uh, making a video about a battery charger is not going to work if all your batteries are fully charged. So uh, here's a little interlude while I discharge the batteries with this brake light bulb and cable tie attachment. We return to the experiments with this charger. Um, with all the batteries fully discharged, courtesy of this 21 watt brake light bulb. So now, let's try putting them in the charger and see what they draw. Once again, plug it in. We've got 1.2 watts being drawn by the charger itself. Okay, so let's start with the uh, A1 battery, which doesn't have the little button on it. And that's drawing, okay, 30 watts, so that's two and a half amps, which is what it said it would draw. Now let's try the one with the button. And it should charge that faster because it's the A2 type. And that's 41 watts. 42 watts. Hmm, what's that in amps? Oh yes, that's three and a half amps, exactly what the manual said it would be. Now what if I pull this out? Oh, that's a better image. And uh, so that the pogo pin disconnects, but not the, 
the other connections and that's dropped back to 30 watts because it thinks it's an A1 type. Oh, this is fun! Let's try the B1. So the B1 is the 4 amp hour battery. Um, let's put that in so that it touches the pogo pin. And we've got 57 watts. Now if that was 60, no, I think it's four and a half amps, isn't it? Let's check. Yes, four and a half amps, 60 minutes for the B1 four amp power. So four and a half, 12s, four 12s are 48, plus six would be 54. It's a little bit higher than that, but yes, it knows it's a B type. Let's pull it off the pogo pin and it drops back to 30 watts because it thinks it's the type without the button. This is fun. Now it looks to me like these two uh, charging bays are entirely separate and independent. The unit has a maximum uh, power they say of 150 watts so it should easily be able to charge two of these things side by side. Might have another one of those actually. Right this one's probably not as fully discharged so it may not draw quite as much. Uh, 54 watts it's meant to be isn't it? Oh, 66 watts. That's curious. And let's put them both in. We should be looking at about 100. And... Well, I was thinking under 120 watts, but it's a bit over. Nonetheless, it can charge these two at four and a half amps each. Pretty good. Now, I expect you can hear the fans in these things. Let's turn one of them off. The other one runs. Let's turn them both off. Both fans stop. Let's have a look at those fans. Let's take this thing apart. Six screws on the bottom of this unit. And there's the bottom off. And yes, it looks like we have two uh, identical circuits here. See the two fans sitting in the back of the unit there. Quick look at one of those, just these little tiny 12 volt fans, I'm guessing. Now, how does this board come out? Oh, quite easily, but it looks like the fan wires are in the housing, so I'll take those fan connectors off. Nice that it's got connectors. And there it is. So what have we got on the board? We've got mains in, a fuse, a PCB mounting fuse, and um, uh, an NTC thermistor, negative temperature coefficient, so that when the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down. That's the inrush current limiter. Class X capacitor. Oh, interesting, there's a, an inductor there, and another Class X capacitor and a common mode choke and then a bridge rectifier yeah this one's got all the stuff let's take a look at these pogo pins they are just pogo pins soldered onto this single-sided pcb oh there are some spark gap contacts here that's on the common mode choke that's interesting we got them on the transformers as well. No, it doesn't look like it. No, the transformers are here and here. So that's on the common mode choke. There is a transformer for each channel. Class Y capacitors. Now they are just simply in series. This uh, point, the midpoint, is not anchored to anything. And they simply link the low voltage, DC, uh, low voltage AC side to the high voltage side and there's another one here with the uh, point between the two capacitors just linking them together and I presume that's done for voltage reasons um, in case the voltage exceeds the operating voltage of the capacitor. And then on the low voltage DC side we just have a big I don't know 14 pin is it controller could even just be a microcontroller controlling the output to the batteries 
and also switching on these four uh, red and green LEDs. So yes, this does seem though to have all of the uh, important high voltage components, ESD components. Yeah, it all seems to be there. So who would have thought that such a low cost uh, power tool range would have such a nice charger. This really does look quite well specified uh, on the board here with the ability to uh, check the battery type and charge the different batteries at different currents. It's all quite impressive really. And uh, a lot of the stuff in this series has a three year warranty as well. I'm not sure whether that applies to the batteries. Uh, I could check that. Well, the manual for that uh, very cheap charger with the A2 battery says this product comes with a three year warranty. It doesn't say anything about the charger having a three year warranty and the battery not. So it looks like the whole lot has a three year warranty. That's what it seems to be. So yeah, I'm not um, massively impressed with the cheap charger, the one that, uh, well, those batteries, uh, I think are eight pounds. So the charger comes in at four pounds. But this charger, which I think I paid $12.99 for, does seem to be built to a much higher spec. I suppose I should plug these fans in really. Yeah, I'd have no hesitation in uh, using this and feeling quite confident about it. So you can get those battery tabs in the right place. And uh, the electric drills that use these 12 volt batteries do seem very good. Um, I'm using them to construct my new shed and I'm not having any problems problems with them. The angle grinder though, that's a bit noddy. So can cheap power tools be good power tools? Yeah, I think they can. Cheerio.